you know, I think after the lockdowns and all the kids who had to work from home, uh, we could just call up a few parents. Mom and dad will be the first ones to tell us um, the struggles is real. If you cannot understand what you are reading, um, you cannot access the information that you need to uh, use to do your schoolwork with. So those would be the first ones. But globally, um, we are really in a very dire situation. We are facing um, a tsunami of uh, learning poverty, of illiteracy. Now, before the lockdowns, it was estimated that um, 100 million students globally would leave school by 2030 not having the skill sets to be um, relevant in a job situation. So they won't be able to function properly in a job situation. Um, there are a number of international uh, evaluations that's done like pearls, um, etc., to evaluate the, the standard of literacy globally. And, um, you know, with the lockdowns, more than 90% of our learners was impacted in a negative way. And this will definitely have an influence on, on their reading skills development. The thing with, with reading is it, it does not develop automatically. So our brains have been wired for spoken language but not for written language and that's why uh, when you teach a child how to read it must be taught explicitly. Um, and in our, there are certain um, skill sets and strategies that needs to be trained and needs to be developed and learned if we want to really um, acquire the levels of reading skills that's needed to function properly in the fourth industrial revolution. Now, there's, there's a lot of um, information available and a lot of discussions about the foundational phases of reading development. So the first years of learning to read is very important and there's a lot that has been said about that. I think for today's purpose, let's just look at um, the important measurable aspects of developmental reading. So reading training shouldn't stop once we've learned how to read. Then we should continue to develop new skill sets and learn new strategies. And the, there are three uh, measurable aspects that we look at with iBrain Gym. So the first one would be your eyes and the way that it moves when you are actually interacting with the information and um, the science or the, the more difficult uh, word we would use to um, describe that would be your ocular motor functions when reading. The second one is the perceptual area and this has to do with how we become aware of information around us and how we interpret that information to make sense of it. So that's another measurable area of reading skills. Um, and then the final one is the cognitive or the comprehension area, the area where we um, can measure the output of what we've been interacting with now um, in, in higher order thinking skills or in lower order thinking skills. So there are different levels of understanding information. Um, and so those three areas, there are international norms and standards for silent reading fluency that's been established. Um, and we can use that to see how the reading skills are developed as we go through the sessions and the training, um, games and uh, exercises. And that helps us to navigate the student or a user of the system as they work through the exercises. Now, silent fluency reading is the least taught skill in reading skills development and um, it is the type of reading that is needed for uh, learning purposes. So this is what we actually need once we leave school, we go to college, we go to university or in the work environment, we have to learn new things. Silent fluency reading is the, the reading type of reading that we need to learn better. That's the beauty of iRain Gym. So once you've done the placement module on the system, it clearly indicates what your skill sets are. 
Um, and we have, as I said, the international norms and standards we can measure this against. With iBrain Gym, we have found that our users not only um, reach the international norms that is expected of them, but they even exceed that outcome. So they do even better than what was expected once they've completed the training modules within iBrain Gym. So iBrain Gym is an online system, it's a web app, um, but it's got a built-in trainer. So the, the iBrain Gym system supports teachers, or it gives, it's a tool that teachers can use to develop these important foundational skill sets in their students right from first years of schooling up into tertiary levels and even further in, in, a, in the work environment, in a corporate environment. Um, you can develop these skills and learn new strategies. You know, every phase of life, there's new challenges that we, we have to face. And even if you change from work, one work environment to another, and that's where iBrain Gym can come in and breach those gaps and help you to achieve or to reach the, the skills that you need to function properly. Um, iBrain Gym has a built-in game plan, uh, so your, your system will take you through the steps to decide which game plan works best for you. And then it ensures that you catch up if you maybe miss a session. You know, when we go to the gym, we've got to be consistent in our training. So you can't just do all your uh, training in one day and expect to see a result. What we want to do with iBrain Gym is as you go to a gym to train as well, there's certain sessions and certain intervals that we do these trainings and if you can stick to your game plan that you and the coach have worked out together um, you will see some really amazing results um, in, in the development that you will experience. Parents, I think it's now the time to go online just to do the placement, just to go and see where your son or your daughter are currently. Because once we know where we are, we can plot a, a, a route, we can chart a course to get where we need to be. Um, so go online, ibraingym.com, do the place me, and we'll take it from there.